بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله the question was asked when it comes to uniting the Muslim Ummah do we just do so for the sake of unity in order to look strong and gain power or do we have to always unite with one another based on correct aqidah only uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with insight and bless us all with ilm al-nafi ruskin tayyib wa amal al-mutaqabbil and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the questioner ameen ya rabbil alamin and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq to give a proper answer based on kitab Allah wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and understanding the salaf of this ummah and may it be an answer that has barakah and not misguidance i mean ya rabbil alamin so do we unite upon anything allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us fi kitab al-kareem wa atasimu bi habli lahi jami'an wa la tafarraqu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa atasimu bi habli lahi Hold on, all of you, steadfast to the rope of Allah, wala tafarraku, and do not divide. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, as we mentioned in, uh, in many of our lessons about this important qaida that you find in some of the ayat or in many verses in the Quran, you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala couples a command with a prohibition or so, uh, a, a negation, for example, the negation of shirk and the uh, uh, affirmation of tawheed, affirming tawheed. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, وَاَتَسِمُوا بِهَبْلِ اللَّهِ This is in the imperative form. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to hold to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَفَرْكُ And then Allah is prohibiting us from dividing. So that shows us that the asl, uh, that the Muslims are, are to unite. They're supposed to unite. This is the asl. This is a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from usul iman and usul al-deen. This is usul al-deen here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us. And we know that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, al-amr yufid al-wujub, that the, the command, uh, it shows that it, uh, that, 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 thing that which is commanded is an obligation. This is the asl. Unless there's other uh, evidence in the sharia, sharia-based evidence, to show us otherwise, to show that it is not uh, something which is wajib. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to hold on to the rope of Allah. And the, and the ulama of tafsir, they mention uh, a variety of different aqwal or statements with regards to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of them say that the hablillah, to hold on to the hablillah, that this is Islam. And some say that it is uh, the book of Allah. And some, meaning the Quran. And some of it, some say that it's the sunnah. And some say that it is the book in the sunnah. And I think this is the most uh, uh, encompassing uh, explanation is that it is the book in book of Allah and the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kitab wa sunnah. So, letting us know that we are ordered Allah is, 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 is commanding us to hold on to his rope and if his rope is his speech meaning the Quran and if his rope is, his rope is uh, the, the book in the Sunnah you know Islam then that lets us know that we have to adhere to Islam in its pristine form and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits us from dividing, so letting us know, letting us know that division is haram, muharram. The Prophet ﷺ said, "If tarqat al Yahud al ita wa sabiin firqa, wa if tarqat al Nasara al ithnatain wa sabiin firqa, wa sata tariku hadhi umma la thalatha wa sabiin firqa, kullaha fi nar al wahida, kullu man hi ya Rasulullah, kala man kana al mithi wa kana alayhi wa ashabi al yom, wa kama kala Nabiu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam." The Prophet ﷺ said, "The Jews broke into." 71 sects uh, and into 71 sects and the and the Christians broke into 72 sects and my ummah would break into 73 sects all of them in, uh, in the fire except one 
So the Sahaba, they wanted to know. That's from Fiqh Fideen. They wanted to know. They wanted to know how to practice, which is very different than us. We ask questions, the strangest questions sometimes, even sometimes not even to have answers. I'll tell you some of the reasons people ask questions. So we're going to make this a lesson that we can all benefit from. One of the reasons people ask questions is to cause fitna. Sometimes they do it. What do you think about so-and-so? What do you think about this group? What do you think about the Mektab of this? What do you think about this publications? What do you think about this, these brothers and their statement? What do you think about this one? He just said this. So some of the people, they ask you to make empty hand. They test you. Another uh, example of this empty hand is they'll ask you about certain individuals. What do you think about Ma'arabi? What do you think about this one? What do you think about him? Oh, Shadid Muhammad just said this. Abdullah al-Hamami said this. Uh, you know, Abdu'ahid or Abu Khadija just said this. This one just said this. What do you think about this? Okay, so they ask you to see what your position is. Hajori just did this. Oh, uh, here's another thing. Sheikh Obeid said this about Sheikh so and so. What's your position? So people do this to make empty hand on other people. So this is another reason people ask questions. Then there are people who ask legitimate questions because they really want to know. They want to know the haq, which I believe this brother asked this question about division and unity, I believe they know, this is why it's sort, sort, somewhat rhetorical, but I, maybe they wanted more explanation. So some people, they ask to know the truth. They want to come closer. This is what the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu majma'in, because they asked because it was ibadah, it was something worth asking, something that was going to bring them closer to Allah, or help them to stay away from the hellfire. This is what we should be asking when we ask questions in Islam. Some of the people are asking me about issues, intricate issues about takfir or in in our series about Noah and Islam, but they live in a disbelieving country and they are being attacked. Even the, the prime ministers in some of those countries like Italy is talking about kicking out Moroccans and kicking out Syrians. And you're worried about intricate details of, uh, of takfir and intricate, you know, and, and your Aqidah teacher is teaching you this and to make takfir of all the gun. Come on. So our priorities are, are, are totally out of whack totally out of whack. I don't care what any of the people say, because this is not what we learned from the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. No, we didn't learn this. They taught us, and they taught us, you know, gave us tarbiyah. A tarbiyah. This is what a lot of those people who don't study with the ulama, they don't get. I don't care if they're good in Arabic. I don't care if they're a translator. But if they did not go and sit with the ulama, ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, in some sort of capacity, I'm talking about for years, putting some, some, some time in under those beards, then you're going to find some knucks. And that happens. We all have knucks. We all have mistakes. So those are some of the reasons. We could talk about many other things, but let's get back to, the, the, to what we're talking about. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. Showing us that that unity and that which we must be upon is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So to go back to answering that question, can we just go with any and everyone? And just for the sake of unity, as some of the callers like Yasir Qadi and some of these other people are calling to this. They made a pledge to get with the Shia, to get with these ones who have all these different ittaqad, all these different creeds, and they want to uh, go forth and dawah and they pledge to not speak about each other. This is not... Uh, sh this is not evidence from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even if they try to say one of the arguments of the Asakadi is he says that brotherhood is an a'zam maslaha. It's a bigger maslaha. This is in general what he says, and I have the quote as he I'm researching some things related to him in my PhD thesis. So this is basically his argument that there's a bigger maslaha of the Islamic brotherhood. La shak. This is from also the usul in, in our religion, but from the usul of the sunnah, which does not take precedence over that brotherhood, but it gives you how we understand that brotherhood. It gives you the tafsir, the, 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 the fiqh of that brotherhood, that the brotherhood is not just in any and everything. How can you have a brotherhood with someone who curses the Sahaba, How can you not speak about the one you're calling the Tawheed, he's calling the Takfir, this one. How can you not, how can you have unity with extremists, like the the, the, the Hizbiyun from ISIS and, and Boko Haram and, 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 and Hizb Tahrir, uh, all these deviant groups, all these deviant groups, these groups of bid'ah, these groups of khurafat, these groups of ma'asi, these groups of takfir and extremism, 
who taint the name of Islam. How can you have unity? So of course, when we talk about holding on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our unity is based on creed. That's ultimately it. It's based on those quiet and those principles, and those quiet and principles are derived from the Book of Allah and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and from the understanding of what we observe from the consensus of the Sahaba and the Salaf of this Ummah, what they had consensus on and what they, uh, a majority of them were upon in as far as uh, regular understandings of the religion and practices and so on and so forth. So, with that being the case, <clears throat> of course our unity is based on the book and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, correct Aqidah and Creed. Because how? The Ashadis don't want to unite with you. Even if you don't, because they will make takfir of you, to your face or at least behind your back. And say, no, how can you say uh, Ar-Rahman ala ar We say it because Allah said it. We say it because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it. The Messenger of Allah Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, he said, Salawat al-Rabbi wa salamu alayhi, he said, our Lord descends to the lowest third of the night, lowest heaven, every last third of the night, and then he asked, and then, ila akhirah hadith, to the rest of the hadith. So letting us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. Yes, we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. And we believe he descends in a manner that suits his majesty. We don't say how. Bila Kaif. And we don't make ta'til, we don't negate it. And we don't make uh, ta'wil, you know, to, to explain away how it is or to explain the alfa, the actual, the, the terminologies or the words themselves. So instead we accept it. So how can you have unity? Now, with that being said, does that mean you go around making hatred and, and enmity? And, and attacking and fighting? No, that doesn't. It does not uh, uh, necessitate that. That everything you have to look at the masalim and mafasid. You have to look at the benefits and the harms. And, and also you have to realize that Ahl Sunnah mutafawit wa Ahl Bid'ah mutafawit. That Ahl Sunnah has different levels and Ahl Bid'ah has different levels. Meaning someone might have a small uh, type of Bid'ah. Even in his aqidah, it maybe it's big because it's major, it's in aqidah, but it could be small as far as its tathir, or far, as far as its effect. Where someone else could be a staunch da'i uh, to, to bid'ah. Okay? And someone else, you know, there's different levels of bid'ah. Likewise, there's different levels of sunnah, meaning some people have more knowledge than others and they practice stronger than others. Some people have stronger practice and middle knowledge, and some people have no knowledge and... Uh, you know, so they have different levels, but they may all be from Ahl Sunnah. Okay? The point being, the last point I want to make is that, so, there may be situations, of course, for greater maslaha of the ummah, that you have to cooperate, even with people from who have a different aqidah with you. You know, as long as it isn't to such an extreme, you're not going to, I don't ever advise that you're going to be getting together with the tikfiris. And nor do we say that we go with the, uh, the principle of Akhwan uh, al and say that, uh, you know, we excuse one another for our mistakes and we unite upon that which we agree upon. No, we don't say that. But sometimes there is a greater maslaha for the Muslim community. So in general, we go to that, that fundamental pr principle of Ahl Sunnah that you'll find in the books of Imam Ahmed in the, uh, the Ulama Qadima, Al Al Qai. Uh, 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 all these uh, classical scholars and their compilations of the books of the Salaf, you know, uh, of the Ittaqad of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah, and the Kutub al Shaykh al Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah wa Shaykh al Islam, Ibn al Qayyum, wa Qablihim Kathir. So, but you'll find that some, sometimes, for example, the Eid prayer, if the Eid prayer in your your locality, it's all the Muslims get together. This is a greater maslaha. This is a greater benefit to enjoy with all the Muslims together. As long as they're Muslim, to enjoy the Eid and, and have that festivity together. You don't say, La, us five, there's only a small amount of Ahl Sunnah in this locality. We're just going to get together and break off from the Ummah. Break off. No, this is a greater mafsada. So this is an incorrect understanding. That's why all of these things. Uh, a lot of these principles, when we come to principles, they go to, they come back to Masale, or Mufasid. They come back to the harms and the benefit. That, and when you have two harms, looking at the lesser of the two evils, all of these are principles, Islamic principles, that we uh, have to look at. And 
really to determine a lot of these things when it comes to when is there more benefit to kind of have some sort of cooperation and understanding with Ahl al-Bidah and when is there less. These things go back to the ulama, those people who have strong fiqh and deen and understanding, understanding and understanding of your situation. Understanding the situation, this is another issue because some of the people, they want to apply everything that's in Saudi Arabia to, for example, Seattle, Washington, which is like two different planets, in fact. Uh, or they want to apply what's in Philly, what goes on in Philly and Seattle. In fact, very different culture and very different relationship between the communities. There's not many indigenous Muslims. There's whole different dynamics, even with Ahl Sunnah, a whole different dynamic. Or what's going on in Birmingham and Croydon and and and, and Brixton and uh, Belfast and whatever else, uh, uh, Car uh, Cardiff and all these places. Of course, the point I want to make when it comes to making fatwa for these things for the ulama is that what. What is the qa'idah that they mention? That they mention? It's in the books. Al hukum ala shay, al hukum ala shay, al hukum ala shay, fur'in ala tasawwurihi. That making a ruling about something, a part of that ruling is that you have a correct understanding, I meaning you have a, a background of that. So, for example, if a shaykh in Timbuktu makes a fatwa about Seattle, the situation in Seattle. But he doesn't, he's never been to Seattle. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't have correct information about Seattle. Maybe he looked on it on the internet and then he made a fatwa. Then of course, this is not gonna be correct. And more than likely, it's not going to bring up the resulted benefit that is uh, gained from the ulama. al hukum al and al So a correct ruling about something a part of that ruling is that you have a correct understanding. And this is very important for us to understand. That's why I want to make this a learning lesson that we gain different benefits because it'll give you an idea about some of the fitness that we see. Because sometimes the brothers will present uh, information to someone to get a hukum on a particular thing, saying, oh, Da'i so and so is, is in the Masjid Ahl Bidah. Sheikh, what do we say about the person who says this? What do we say about the person who's working in such and such Masjid? Mubtadiya, la. A hukum al shayfar al tazawrihi. So he has to have a correct, before he makes a hukum on that particular individual or that particular situation, he needs a, a proper understanding of what is taking place. He needs background about those issues. Because no one has wahi except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the NBA of a kablihim. Salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct, Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that wasn't correct, was on myself, shaitan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad.